I would say that President Obama uh, domestic violence prevention needs to be on the national agenda. There is, you know, resources, uh, it being talked about in the schools, not the country, but the grade school going up. I feel very, very passionate about that. I think that we've got to talk about it uh, early on with the young people, but I also think we need to talk about uh, uh, with elders. Well, we have a lot of issues with elder abuse in New York City that we're talking about. You know, I've seen a couple workshops floating around in the last couple of weeks that we've got to be on the way. That's, that's the, this is pervasive. I'm not sure who said it uh, here tonight, um, but it is completely out of control domestic violence. And I think that um, it needs to be a priority for the entire government States should be mandated that we look at local municipalities be mandated to have an agenda around domestic violence prevention. I think it's terrible that here we are having a conversation about in New York City, the most sophisticated city in the country, part of the planet, where do women go if they're bad? In 2009, that makes no sense to me. You know, I mean, because here I'm standing thinking about this. You know, I know when we do our DD prevention event in uh, weeks in Brooklyn, so we're going to have women coming to us and saying, where can I go? and what answers are we going to give them. And so it says to me that it's not been a priority. I think that um, domestic violence needs to be uh, on the level of breast cancer awareness and other main mm -hmm. issues in this country mm -hmm. in terms of funding, in terms of resources, in terms of awareness. Uh, I was just struck uh, uh, in the, um, uh, that a lot of folks in the DB community, DB, uh, uh, anti-DB advocate community, are not even using the social networks effectively. You know, we should be Twittering about this all the time. We should be Facebooking about this, you know. Uh, and I think that um, it's got to come up from uh, up high, but I also think it's got to come from the grassroots. They need the combination. I don't know if it's all the responsibility on President Obama, because if you look at the history of political social movements in this country, it's always come from the people, and then they put the pressure on the folks in the leaders' positions. I mean, a couple quick examples, abolitionist movement, conversation about slavery. You know, women's right to vote, that was a grassroots movement. Eventually, women got the right to vote. The civil rights movement came from the bottom. Lyndon Johnson, the Voting Rights Act, 65, Civil Rights Bill, 64. And so that's the history. You know, the whole issue of gay marriage for the LGBT committee, grassroots organizing for a long time. And I think we got to do that as, 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 as DV folks. And uh, I think that uh, Michaela, Clinton, and other folks who do this work would agree. I think we've made some progress, but we've got a long way to go. And I think part of the progress, the young man was talking, I'm happy that a 22-year-old was well, sitting here, here, because I was, when I was 22, I wasn't sitting here. You know what I was doing at 22 when I talked about it. And so that's, that's progress, but what we need to do now is multiply all these 22-year-olds out there. And I, I agree that it's got to uh, be young people advocating with each other, you know. But they also, where we come in, we've got to be able to give them some resources, you know, uh, in terms of what they need to be doing. Like, you know, uh, I think hip hop is a very useful tool. I think that's what he's kind of alluding to. That's the language of most many young people today. How can we take the the best parts of hip hop and use it as a way to talk about uh, uh, ending gender violence as opposed to reinforcing all the terrible stuff?